So today I had a day off for a change and decided to tackle the power steering leak on my 124. This is the state that it's in at the moment. As you can see it's pretty much leaking from every possible location. I think it's even leaking from between the reservoir and the pump body as you can see here. I don't believe it's leaking from the lid uh, because it's not overly wet on the sides of the tank. I mean it is slightly, but nothing overly concerning. That may have just been residue from spilling it while filling at some stage. And I may of course uh, run it slightly over full as well, meaning some may have splashed out of that vented cap. But overall this pump is very leaky and resealing it is the best possible outcome. I didn't uh, follow any service manuals, I basically just followed my nose and uh, got down to the pump. Unfortunately I broke this ducting in the process of uh, putting the car back together so it's even worse now, so I'm going to have to replace it if they're still available, I'm not 100% sure, but I will try get one anyway. If you need to do your belt tensioner, I would suggest doing the power steering pump at the same time, as I've discovered Ideally, the tensioner should be removed first before removing the pump. What I'm doing here, of course, is possible, but it's not the easiest way of doing it. I was lazy, I didn't want to take the tensioner off, and I just did it th this way. It's not ideal, but it works. <laughs> In these cramped little engine bays, you've got to do whatever you can to make a bit more room for yourself. So I started by removing the radiator shroud. Uh, pretty much mandatory unless you've got child-sized hands because you need to access the tensioner bolt to loosen the belt. Otherwise, you've got no hope of doing this.
Again, I didn't follow the manual, I just did what I remembered from last time I had this apart. So I loosened the uh, main tensioner bolt first. Uh, that allows it to move freely. And then once that was done, I used the adjustment nut on the top to get it into the loose position. What I find works on this particular car is jamming a screwdriver in the side uh, of the slot that that adjustment nut goes into. It keeps it in the right position and stops it sliding off, so I can actually successfully loosen the tensioner this way. Depending on the condition of your car, you might actually want to loosen the pulley bolts before taking off the tensioner. Uh, I've had this off recently, well within the last few years, and we don't have adverse weather conditions here, so these bolts never seize on Australian cars, so I had no problems taking it out while the belt was loose. You may not have the same luck if you live in a country where everything likes to rust up, you might want to do everything possible to make your life easier here. It was then a case of uh, removing the bolts that secure the pump to the bracket that it sits in. There's two at the front and two at the rear. There's no easy way of doing this. Well, maybe if you followed the manual and had the tensioner out first it would probably be a lot easier. But the rear ones, well, they're going to be a pain in the ass no matter what. Uh, one of these front ones actually goes into a nut at the rear. I devised a nice little method of holding that nut in my ring spanner when it came to reinstalling the pump, but taking it off isn't particularly difficult. You just have to fish your spanner down in there and hope for the best. This is the lower uh, bolt that has the nut at the rear that I'm struggling with at the moment. Uh, as long as you can get your ring spanner in there, it's not actually that hard. Uh, you really don't want to drop that nut because it would disappear into the unknown and you'll probably never find it again. But uh, what I did when it came to reinstalling it, I actually used a piece of paper towel and pushed the nut through that into my ring spanner and it actually held it quite firmly so there was not much chance of dropping it when it came to reinstalling it. All you've got to do is get the first few threads started and it's not going anywhere and then you can safely uh, tighten it up and it's job done.
You can never have too much room doing this job, so I decided to remove the air filter housing as well. Doesn't make that much difference, but that uh, intake snorkel part does get in the way, so this does help. Due to the angles involved and the impossible access for some of these bolts, not all of them have been shown clearly uh, how to remove. You just have to work that out for yourself. The mess this pump's been creating became clear after it was uh, liberated from the car. You can see that there's oil absolutely everywhere. Not just in its bracket, it's sprayed all over the side of the engine. Uh, and even the uh, tray underneath the engine bay had quite a bit of power steering fluid as well. After removing the pump, it's time to disassemble it and get started on putting the new seal kit through it. Not only do I have the seal kit, I have a new filter which I would recommend installing anytime the pump's been opened or the system in general because you don't want any foreign material going through there and destroying either the pump or the steering box.
I didn't follow any service manual documentation to reseal this pump. Uh, I have done one before and basically just operated off memory. And as long as you've used at least the majority of the seals that come in the kit, you're doing pretty well.
a handy little trick to stop the vein pump from falling to pieces and turning into a nightmare is just wrapping it up in some kind of uh, absorbent material or any material at all. It holds it tightly together and it's not going anywhere then. Here are the pump components after thoroughly cleaning and they're basically ready for reassembly with the new seal kit now. Seeing this upsets me no end, especially since this car has had specialist Mercedes servicing for its entire life. I'm the only person that's ever done DIY repairs. Some idiot has cross-threaded that connection. Now these O-rings were so hard I had no chance of getting them out other than stabbing them with this razor blade. Uh, this worked surprisingly well. And they're so hard that the razor blade didn't even go all the way through, so there's no damage whatsoever to the metal. You can clearly see this is a job that is well overdue. These O-rings are not even round in their profile anymore. They're completely flat, so they barely would be sealing at all. These are the two large ones. At least they're still rubbery. Uh, the smaller ones are basically completely baked into some kind of Bakelite type material. The two high pressure ones behind the vein pump, as you can see now, basically shatter as soon as you try to flex them in any way. There's no way in hell this pump was working to 100% efficiency. Of course, one cannot forget the front shaft seal. This is a prime candidate for leaks as well. And just be careful that this seal doesn't explode off into your eyes, because uh, if you do it like I did, it comes off quite violently. And that was it hitting the roof of the shed, the noise you heard. And of course, now it's time for reassembly. A press is not really necessary. I just have one, and it's easy this way. I only used one finger on the pump of the press to move it down, so it's really not hard to get this seal to go in.
Now that that excitement is over, it was time to get the car engine ready for the pump to get installed. So I proceeded to degrease all of that spilled oil and it actually came out pretty well. As part of this job, I also wanted to replace one of these return lines that was clearly leaking. Just the one at the pump itself, it's oil soaked externally. Now I don't know if it was the pump that was leaking or the hose itself, but the replacement hose I got from Pelican Parts, I am dissatisfied with. While the inner diameter is correct, the outer diameter is nowhere near correct. So I will be getting in contact with the Classic Center for some correct hose if it's still available. Now with the hose that I've put on there, it does work, but these original clamps are basically having to be deformed to tighten enough to clamp down because the hose is much narrower. Once I have sourced a more satisfactory hose, I will replace all three of the return lines. On right-hand drive cars, you've got one at the steering box itself, and you've got two at the cooler. All three are around 30 centimeters long each, so I will need a substantial amount of hose. The moment has finally come to test all of my hard work.
this is everything back together now and I have degreased the entire underside of the car and I'm happy to say there's no leaks whatsoever. Time will tell though, but I'll have to take it for a long drive and see how we go.